Hello once again guys, it's that time again. It's time for another NL unboxing video and this time there is an actual box. Fantastic. Uh, last year, towards the end of the year, Tops in the UK uh, put together a special on-demand set which recently I came to my door. So it comes in this lovely little black box. There's no hint of what's inside. But this is the Tops On Demand 30 Years of the Dead Man set. Um, this was made to order. There was a limited period in which you could... Um, you sort of pre-ordered it, you paid for it in advance, and they made enough sets for the number of people that had ordered it, and no more, as is uh, my understanding. So if you didn't pre-order this, then unfortunately you can't get it. So uh, I'm going to share it with you all now. Uh, not physically, obviously I'm going to pop them in this binder. <laughs> I, haven't had, I haven't have plenty of spare binders, I can tell you. Um... So yeah, this is just something a little bit neat. Uh, obviously celebrating the 30 year career of The Undertaker. Um, who's one of my favourite wrestlers. So let's get it open. We'll get the uh, shrink wrap off first. Let's see if we can do that without making too much of a mess of things. Oh, there we go. A nice little hole to slip the finger in there. And the rest just slides off. Marvellous. So we've got... Oh, it's one of these. Oh, okay. Oh, hello. Wow. This is packaged rather nicely, I have to say. We've got a uh, hard plastic case wrapped with the Tops logo there. Oh, I like this. There's quite a lot of cards in here, actually. Uh, it would appear I'm going to have to tear that. Or uh, at least unpeel it. I don't usually get standard, oh yeah, there we go, standard sort of wrestling trading cards. They're not normally easily available in the UK, to tell you the truth. I know they uh, they tend to do big business with them in America. Uh, in Britain, you can order, uh, via the Tops website, you can order the uh, trading cards that you guys get in America, but you can only get them in large sort of collector's boxes and it's still uh, in sealed packs so it's expensive unfortunately um, as you guys know I collect the top slam attacks cards they're a little bit more simplistic they did actually do a, uh, a UK set of cards I think it was last year possibly the year before I don't know how well they took off but I know you can get um, the American trading cards, if you're willing to put the money down. This was an exception, though, because I like The Undertaker. Just going to take the lid off there. I like The Undertaker. You know, it's an iconic career, and, you know, it was a reasonable price as well. I think uh, it was less than £25, including postage. So let's have a look through what we get in here. We've got a little squidgy foam thing to keep them safe. So straight off the bat, look at the size of that ham hock. <laughs> now, to get to these, I'm going to have to sort of tip them out. So we're going to go through the cards one by one, see what's what. So on the back, we've got little fun facts. So this is uh, the first card, as you can see in the top corner. Number one, Legend of the Undertaker, 11 1998 That's uh, American date format. Obviously, we'd say 2211. So that's uh, Survivor Series Undertaker's debut. Rowdy Roddy Piper's now famous description on first seeing Undertaker showed just how intimidating the dead man was right from the start of his WWE career. Led to the ring by Brother Love, Undertaker entered his Survivor Series match and quickly began to tear apart the opposition, the Dream Team, before being counted out. So there he is, that's Undertaker in his first match. Fantastic. All right, number two. I'm not going to read. Uh, not going to read all the the trivia notes on the back. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. <laughs> so we have rising from the casket. 
22nd of January 1994. Iconic classic Undertaker picture. That's from the Royal Rumble 1994. When Undertaker was sealed in the casket and floated up towards the heavens, which seems antithetical of, uh, <laughs> of Undertaker's uh, persona. So this one is from 1994, 29th of August, wherein he defeated the Imposter Undertaker at SummerSlam. You know, another iconic moment, not a, not a great wrestling match by any means, but an iconic moment in Taker's career, moments that we talk about even years later. Speaking of imposters, Diesel, of course, had another uh, rather well-known imposter, <laughs> his Undertaker intimidating Diesel. This is from uh, the 18th of March, 1996. So we're getting a slow and steady progression through the years here. This is uh, on the run-up to Undertaker's Diesel match. Uh, here it is, of course, another iconic moment from June. June? Sorry, October. <laughs> Can't count. October 20th, 1996. And bursting through the grave there, the uh, buried alive match between Undertaker and Mankind. A few fun facts on the back here. I'll hold these up so you guys can uh, pause and read them out. I'm not going to. I'm going to take up that much of your time reading them all out. Ah, this next one's very cool. This is from Survivor Series '96. Undertaker descending from above. Those wings, very cool. Elaborate entrances are far from unfamiliar t uh, territory for the dead man. That is true. In 1998, here's Undertaker playing mind games with Kane. I'm trying to focus that. Very old school Kane there. God, he was a mountain of muscle, wasn't he? That has got to be Kane, as uh, I am informed. <laughs> Speaking of Kane, here's another one from 98. Setting Kane on fire. Another really iconic moment in the history of The Undertaker. The Inferno match. Oh, well, I mean, one of the most iconic moments in both men's career. 28th of June, 1998. A moment that needs no introduction to many of you. Throwing mankind off this cell. Amazing, amazing moment. Yeah, facts on the back there. One of the most remembered moments in WWE history. You are not wrong with that one, guys. Next. Disguising as Kane. Surely that should be disguised as Kane. Kane, probably one of Undertaker's most enduring rivals. Up next we have playing mind games with the boss. Quite a funny little picture actually that one. Undertaker's uh, rivalry with Vince McMahon. Of course we know how that turned out. Oh and of course going back to Hell in a Cell, here's Undertaker choke slamming Rikishi off the cell. Another uh, epic Hell in a Cell moment. Not quite as well remembered as the uh, the original with Foley, of course. That was a defining moment in wrestling history. 
Armageddon 2000. I'm not so sure how this font that makes the uh, zeros look like eights. That's a little bit odd. And then we have the Brothers of Destruction become double tag champions. SummerSlam 2001. Of course, in the, the middle of the invasion angle. I know there are strong opinions on the matter of that particular storyline. Next up, we have winning the WWE Hardcore Championship. This is from 2001 in uh, September. There we go. Went on to hold the goal for 58 days, which was uh, quite the achievement for the Hardcore Championship around that time. And here we go, 2002, winning the WWE Undisputed Championship. Which, of course, as a number of you now know, is my favourite WWE Championship belt. You can look through previous NL unboxing videos. See where I got my replica of that. Judgment Day 02. Undertaker was really... Really fun to watch in the uh, Ruthless Aggression era when he wasn't sort of hamstrung by a lot of the limitations of the Dead Man character. I think they kind of found a, a middle ground when he uh, came back as the Dead Man, and here indeed he is, Return of the Dead Man, 2004. It was, uh, of course, at WrestleMania. Taken on Kane at WrestleMania 20. Not a great match, but in terms of storyline, a real spectacle, that one. Then we have, from 2005, The Dead Has Risen. See, this is, again, this was kind of a really good era for Undertaker. They find a, found a good sort of middle ground for his character. He was, you know, he wasn't slow and plodding and methodical. He was a little bit faster paced in the ring. Survivor Series. <laughs> we all remember uh, Randy Orton getting into it with Undertaker, I'm sure. 2006, Destroying the Ring. Well, we've all been there. It's from the Royal Rumble. Sending fear across the champion's face. And then we have winning the Royal Rumble the following year, 2007. So this is kind of where he's starting to show his age a little bit, I think. You know, still, still kind of only halfway through the story. In a way, it's kind of... I was going to say it's kind of a surprise it took Undertaker this long to win the Rumble, but at the same time, it's not. Because... He's not a guy that needed a Rumble win. You know, you could insert the Undertaker into the main event whenever you pleased. Oh, now here's an iconic moment. 17th of August, 2008. Choke slamming Edge to hell. Really iconic moment, that one. Edge, one of those opponents that did kind of bring out the best in Undertaker towards uh, the second half of his career, shall we say? I mean, Edge was great. I'm glad that he's, I'm glad that he's sort of recovered. You know, made his way back to active competition. I'm really happy for him. I was, I was a big fan of Edge, particularly towards the end of his run. All right, so that's the end of uh, that half of the set. Now we've got something uh, different entirely. Now we have a different subsection, The Streak. Here we are, WrestleMania 7, The Streak Begins. We'll have some facts about each of the streak matches. 
It was an innocuous start that under any other circumstance would not have been so highly regarded, but this was the start to the vaunted, undefeated streak that Undertaker carried through the majority of his WWE career. Less than a year into his career, the Phenom laid to rest a WWE Hall of Famer in short order. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Interesting wording, interesting choice of photo, didn't really think of that. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know why they did it, obviously. You can't fault them. We have uh, WrestleMania 8, Undertaker, as defeating Jake, the Snake, Roberts. I'm going to focus there. Come on. There we go. Facts on uh, Snakey Jakey. Jake, the master of mind games, of course. And we have a WrestleMania 11. Undertaker gets one over on the Million Dollar Corporation. But it's not every match in the streak accounted for. Which, you know, is fair enough, I suppose. Come on, focus. There we go. Less than seven minutes. <laughs> it's very interesting how they're getting around naming some of these people. Some of which so they don't have to pay out royalties, I have no doubt, but uh, some for slightly more sinister means, unfortunately. Uh, WrestleMania 12, in which Undertaker defeated Diesel. We have a 17 minute long Kevin Nash match. What were they thinking? This is a very cool photo. This is quite iconic, this one. Undertaker from WrestleMania 13 defeating Psycho Sid for the WWE Championship. Great classic photo of Taker there. The match that started his reign at the top of the pecking order. Amazing that it took him like nearly six years to get to that point. When you think of it, and, I mean, I don't. I wasn't around, obviously, but I do wonder what contemporary fans at the time made of Undertaker. You know, he was like nothing that had been seen before. WrestleMania 14 against Kane is the next one. It's quite a cool photo. The druids there. And next we have Undertaker defeating the Big Boss Man. Big Boss Man. In a Hell in a Cell match. It's very sinister looking Undertaker there. Oh, indeed, one of the most sinister matches of his storied career. So, uh, yes, good uh, good choice of wording by me there. <laughs> Followed by this next card, WrestleMania X7, defeating a Triple H. Remembered fondly as perhaps WWE's greatest super card of all time, WrestleMania 17, or X7 if you prefer. You never really think of Triple H as being one of Undertaker's more frequent WrestleMania opponents, but, you know, there we go. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no, there's a misprint on this one. Rick Flair in a no-disqualification match. That was from uh, X8. That was from WrestleMania 18. Oops. Oh, they've got it right on the back, at least. I don't know. And it's only halfway through the streak at that point. Oh, heck, here we go. 
Undertaker defeating Big Show and A Train in a handicap match. This was the first WrestleMania I ever saw. It's a good show, WrestleMania 19. I really rather like it. This was not a great match, admittedly, but it would have been infinitely worse. Had uh, Undertaker's partner been involved in the match, I suspect. Nathan Jones, of course, Undertaker's tag partner, originally assigned for this match. Taken out after a backstage assault. And they realised that he was garbage. Uh, WrestleMania 20, defeating Kane, of course. We've already uh, had that moment in the other subset. This was a very cool moment. WrestleMania 20 is another good show. You know, it's it, there was a, a, a good long run there where WrestleMania was just great show after great show after great show. The spectacle in particular. You know, I'm not saying every match up and down the card was a thrilling wrestling match, as I've already previously alluded to. But the show itself was just fun to watch. Speaking of good WrestleManias, here's Undertaker defeating Randy Orton. Big old apron leg drop there. I've got a height on that. Not too bad for a big bloke. Came away with the big W. <laughs> well, we've all been there. Up next, we have WrestleMania 22 defeating Mark Henry in a casket match. That was a very cool storyline going into that one. <laughs> Do you know, I have to say, this was kind of around the point at which Mark Henry <laughs> was really, really getting to be pretty bloody good it's mark henry's a strange one you know in his early career he was barely barely watchable i gotta say and then as he got on he got better and better and better and towards the end he's i'd say he's one of the best big men of all time uh, wrestlemania 23 defeating batista for the world heavyweight championship that's a cool photo you can see uh the years starting to take their toll on him Probably one of Batista's uh, career highlights, that one, I dare say. Up next we have WrestleMania at 24, defeating Edge for the World Heavyweight Championship. Very cool, very moody photograph. I mean, obviously, you know, the quality of cameras at this point is massively improving. So these shots are better looking than some of the older ones. Good match. I seem to remember for a while, at least, I don't know if it's still true, Edge had the second best WrestleMania win-loss record. I think that was the match that put an end to that. Ah, uh, well, we reached one of the classics, ladies and gentlemen. WrestleMania 25 against Shawn Michaels. I think we were all kind of blown away by this one. It's been called the greatest match in WWE history, and with tension, passion, and anguish behind it, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker truly put on a performance for the ages. Undertaker was at his fighting best when he accepted the challenge of the Heartbreak Kid and was bound and determined not to fall to Re Mr. WrestleMania. In the end, the Phenom streak continued. Now, I don't know where I fall on it being the best ever. Because the following year, WrestleMania 26, we have The Undertaker retiring the Heartbreak Kid. I don't know which I think of the two had the better match and the better story. I think I probably have to go back to them. I remember having opinions at the time. They may have changed. I think... I think realistically we all knew Michaels was retiring that night. So we, that probably took out of the story aspect of things a little bit. But still a bloody good match, that one. No question. 
Next, we have WrestleMania 27. Following on from that, Undertaker defeating Triple H in a no-holds-barred match. Come on, come into focus. Come on. There we go. That's better. A lot of purple in these later cards. Cameo from my cat again. And indeed, WrestleMania 28. That was followed up by Triple H being uh, defeated once again by Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match. Which was uh, supposed to be the big bowing out for both of them, really, but uh, didn't quite pan out that way, did it? And then the last card in the set. <laughs> oh, this is so dickish. What an asshole thing to do. WrestleMania 29. Undertaker defeats the best in the world. Wow. When you call yourself the best in the world, it means you're ready to take on any challenge with the expectation of victory. So it's not surprising that Undertaker's vaunted streak was to put to yet another test by a cocky soul. Just as many had done before, this superstar felt he and he alone could dethrone the dead man. But he felt just as so he fell just as so many others had to Undertaker. What an asshole thing to do! I mean, I I get it, okay? Maybe they didn't want to pay him the royalties, but that's just being a dick, you know? That's not sidestepping a guy that allegedly murdered someone. That's just... Ooh. Ooh, I'm a little bit miffed about that. CM Punk, obviously, for those of you who uh, may have forgotten. Well, anyway, uh, I'm just going to pause the video now, and then we're going to get them in this lovely binder and see how that looks. Alrighty guys, so I got the cards away, all neat and tidy in the binder there. Um, I, you know, generally speaking, if it's a, a set of slime attacks trading cards, you, you have to put them back to back to fit them all in. But because this is a relatively smaller set of cards, uh, I've uh, elected to have the backs on display as well. So this is the kind of thing where you wouldn't want to just put it back in the box. You'd want to be able to look at this because this is a nice set. You know? Yes, my categories. So we've got the 18 Legend of the Undertaker cards. We've got 18 WrestleMania Streak cards. Now, I do have a few issues with this set. On the whole, I like it. On the whole, I'm very happy with this. I'm going to let the slight to CM Punk slide on this particular occasion. <laughs> I'm not even necessarily bothered at the um, at the fact they didn't name him. Like I get it. I think it's the is you. Pro I don't know if you can make it out. Is the fact they put "best in the world" in quotation marks? Like you know, oh, oh, are you the best in the world? Are you, mate? All right then. That just seems really dickish to me. I'm gonna let that slide. Um, I'm I'm even gonna let slide the fact they didn't proofread the the Ric Flair card. Um, which says that took place at WrestleMania 17. I'm going to let that slide. The thing that I do have kind of an issue with on this one is it feels like there should be more. And yes, I know that means it would probably cost more money, but I kind of don't mind. The streak was, as we know, 21 and 1. So you have opportunity there. For more cards than we have. Now we have 20. And I get it. You know I appreciate that. They can't necessarily. Use all the names. And one of them. In fact a few of them were a rematch. Like I think. It, I think without checking. Isn't Kane the only rematch that's missing here. I know. Like they met at Mania three times I think. I could be wrong. There's definitely one missing here. In fact you know. Why don't we. Why don't we use the tools they've given us? <laughs> Pull out the old sticker album and see what's represented. All right, let's let's run through these because one's missing. I, I'm curious to know which one it is, because if they can put in Triple H three times, you know, it, 
It doesn't seem right to me somehow. All right, page 22. All right, so... Uh, for, right, but here's what I don't get. They didn't want to name Snooker because he's allegedly a murdering bastard, but there he is! Right, let's have a look. Jimmy Snooker, yes. Jake Roberts, yes. Giant Gonzalez, not named, but yes. Oh, kind of dickish as well, to be fair. Oh, King Kong Bundy. That's strange. So King Kong Bundy's not in here. Diesel, yes. Sid, yes. Kane, boss man. Triple H, Flair. Okay, so far so good. Uh, handicap match. Kane again, obviously. Oh, they did only fight twice at Mania, fair enough. Orton, Henry, Batista, Edge. 2 HBK, Triple H1, Triple H2, CM Punk. Right, so that... This is so strange to me. Why would you not put in King Kong Bundy? He's not on bad terms with WWE, surely? I don't get that at all. That's really odd. Why would you leave one match out? How bloody odd is that? I mean, I get it, you know. I get them not including the Lesnar match. In a fashion. To me, I'd, I, I, would have, I would have included all of them. To not is strange. So that's odd. Here's the other thing that I think is particularly weird. So, The Legend of the Undertaker. The last card we have here is SummerSlam 2008. And that's a great match, and that's cool, but his career went for another 12 years. It feels like the set's half complete, you know? And none of that would matter if not for the fact it's called 30 Years of the Dead Man. And all 30 years are not represented here. The streak is, you know, that's 2013. So even if you combine the two sets, the two subsets into one, there's still seven years missing. I don't understand. Like, uh, you've got him facing again, uh, facing off against Cena, uh, against Bray Wyatt, against. Uh, you could have the you could have the match um, this match against Goldberg. You know, you could have. God, there's so many, so many other t Undertaker matches. Uh, the Super Showdown match, the tag team match, uh, Brothers of Destruction versus DX. There are a lot of great moments he's been included in, and quite honestly, the most glaring omission from this is the Boneyard match. His final match. Even if you wanted to skip from 2008 all the way to 2020, even if you want to say, well, you know, Undertaker's WrestleMania matches sucked, whatever, I don't entirely agree. And I appreciate you don't have a lot to draw from in as much as he's not there 52 weeks of the year, but he's had some amazing headliner matches. Again, not the best in-ring matches, but the power of the storylines behind them. Roman Reigns! You know, I'm baffled that this is an incomplete story that they've marketed as 30 years of the dead man. And I don't know who's to blame for that. So, I mean, i got to say, the quality of the card stock is amazing. The designs are beautiful. The photos, wonderful. The actual cards themselves, fantastic. Can't complain. But as a set, this is an incomplete history. I don't know how that's been allowed to happen. I don't understand it. And I, I could almost... I could almost understand it if it was like... Oh, well, you know, we had to give away space in the set to do the streak. But it's like, okay, but you've put in Triple H three times. You've put in Kane twice. You've put in Shawn Michaels twice. And you still managed to leave one of them out. I don't at all get it. So... I gotta say, for me, this is kind of a middle of the road kind of result. I like what's here, but there's not enough of it, you know? It feels like there should be more. 
And I hate to have to sort of end the review on a sour note like that, but I think, as someone that likes The Undertaker, I think this is missing some of his more exciting moments from the last seven years. That's a big chunk of time. We've had dream matches in that time. You know? I, I, very, very odd. Very odd. I could, Like I said, I could understand if it was just, you know... The Undertaker's greatest moments, you know, the the highlights of the dead man's career. 30 years of The Undertaker, and 30 years are not represented here, I'm sorry. So I think that's a shame. Like I say, what's here is really good. What's missing is really glaring by its omission. And I think that, unfortunately, does drag this down a little bit. So, I, you know, I'm sorry to have to end it on a sad note like that, but... There we go. Um, on the whole... Would I would I send for another one of these? Depends on the subject matter. You can buy on-demand content from Tops quite regularly in Britain. They do a lot of on-demand football cards. They've done Star Wars cards, I believe. Um, I wouldn't want them to be doing individual cards for sale at, like, £7-odd. Um, I think that kind of takes the mickey a little bit. Uh, but there's obviously a market for it, you know? Um, but another set like this, yeah, I probably would. There there are a lot of wrestlers they could do these for, um, and perhaps have, and I've just not been aware, I, you know, I'll admit. Um, a Stone Cold Steve Austin one would be really cool. You could do a quite good Triple H one, I think. One of The Rock would be good. Uh, you know, the Attitude Era, you could mine a lot out of that. Mick Foley would be another great one. Um... I mean, hey, do one for Edge. Why not? You know, he's he's making his comeback. He's on his way to WrestleMania. I, you know, I wouldn't object to buying another set like this. This is a cool idea. But unfortunately, this one is marred by the omissions, I have to say. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What Undertaker moments would you have included in the set? Drop us a comment below. And until next time, guys, thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye! So, you remember how mere moments ago you heard me say that I probably wouldn't be that interested if they did a series of individual WWE trading cards that they charged individually for? Well, it turns out that is, in fact, exactly what tops are doing. I learned that within about 30 minutes of finishing recording this video. Um, and they look fantastic. <laughs> they look lovely. They've shown off the first two cards in the set, and they look great. So it is to my very real shame that, yes, I ordered them. Uh, they are part of what Top's called the Living Set. So they've unveiled two cards so far. The first one is Stone Cold Steve Austin. The second one is Trish Stratus. Now, the Living Set works differently to any other trading card set. It starts with number one, but it doesn't have a finish in sight. So in theory, they can keep these going forever. And because I'm a sucker, I'll probably keep ordering them. I j it just appeals to me to have something that, I mean, it, it says in the description it, it's not going to necessarily be a particular theme or era, so I like the idea that it's going to cover all of WWE history. That's cool to me, and it started off in very strong fashion. The all-time greatest superstars of both the men and women in WWE. So yeah, all right, laugh at me all you like. I'm a sucker, I know. I'm a big dummy. But they look lovely, these uh, painted illustrations of these two all-time greats. So, I don't apologise. So there. Uh, what I will do is I'll... Um, I'll, co I'll, you know, I'll, I'll collect these and see how the collection goes, and I'll give you guys some uh, video updates, I guess. So, alright... You can all laugh at me now for being stupid. Alright, catch you guys later. Bye-bye.